The time a president showed up here was in 1942, 25 years ago. The occasion was the opening of Camp Pendleton, and the president was Franklin D. Roosevelt. This afternoon at 1.30, Lyndon Baines Johnson became the second president to set foot on the big base north of Oceanside. He arrived by helicopter for the third stop in his cross-country division, which included a massing of the colors on the football field in the 5th Division area of the base. line, the president took honors. The band played ruffles and flourishes, and a 21-gun salute sounded. Major General Lewis J. Fields and Major General Wood B. Kyle accompanied the president to the platform. On hand at the platform, Secretary of Defense Robert S. McNamara. The president and the thousands of spectators witnessed a depiction of Marine Corps history from the Revolutionary War right up to Vietnam. One of the platform guests was Marine Gunnery Sergeant Jimmy Howard, the recent Congressional Medal of Honor winner. Then a 200-pound birthday cake, a Marine Corps tradition, was brought up for the president to cut. The president gave the first piece of cake to Major General Lewis J. Fields, commanding officer at Camp Pendleton. In turn, Fields presented it to the oldest of Pendleton's 45,000 Marines, 60s E. Doggett, 17 years old. Doggett is from Mesquite in the president's home state of Texas. Before leaving the, the pageant area, the president the made a brief States speech of in support of his Vietnam policy and the men fighting in that country. I have come here today from across the country for two very important reasons. To pay tribute to the United States Marine Corps on its birthday and to salute the Marines around the world who are following 192 years of valor. It is no secret that I like can-do people, and I know that this is the place to find them, from your general fields to your newest boot. It is also no secret that we have had an invasion of Marines in our own White House family. As one who has uh, had glimpses of a Marine pursuing his objective the past few months, I am impressed. Here at Pendleton, men know what the commitment to freedom must co sometimes cost. Marines are winning in Vietnam, where the only victory that we seek is to keep a small country out of the hands of aggressors. You and I know that it is harder and tougher to ask for and to achieve a restrained and limited victory. One could surrender or start World War III and could do either without much help or much brain. Oh, 
Okay, one, two, three, four, test. Hello there, mother. Or you'll have to yell go. No. This afternoon at what time is it? Go on, what do you have to pick you pretty quick? Huh? This afternoon at 1.30, Lyndon Baines Johnson became the second president to set foot on the big base north of Oceanside. He arrived by helicopter for the third stop in his cross-country tour of military installations. Johnson became the second president to set foot on the big base north of Oceanside. He arrived by helicopter for the third stop in his cross-country tour of military installations. This afternoon at 1.30, Lyndon Baines Johnson became the second president to set foot on the big base north of Oceanside. He arrived by helicopter for the third stop in his cross-country tour of military installations. This afternoon at one. Start once more. Hold it. Okay, go. Go. What? A man leaving the service has a right to get as much education as he wants. He has a right to a decent job and a decent home. He has a right to raise his family, not only with dignity, but with some of the joys and the pleasures which freedom means. We know that you will keep your commitment to us. And I came here today to tell you that we are going to keep our commitment to you. The president then left the parade area for the Camp Pendleton Naval Hospital where he talked with sick and wounded Marines. Mr. Johnson is spending the night aboard the carrier Enterprise. He'll take part in Veterans Day ceremonies aboard ship tomorrow morning. Then he'll fly to North Island by helicopter and then board his presidential jet. The Navy is inviting the public to see Mr. Johnson tomorrow morning. Some observers say this visit marks the beginning of the 1968 presidential campaign. Others say Mr. Johnson just wants to spend Veterans Day with the boys in uniform. Whatever his motives, Mr. Johnson caused quite a stir here today at Camp Pendleton. George Lewis reporting for TV8 News. <laughs>